Hey Preston, you do realize you can't trademark a movement, right? So Preston Poulter decided to trademark the name Comicsgate in an effort to prove he doesn't know how trademark law, social movements, or common sense works. I discovered this brilliant maneuver to own Comicsgate, literally and figuratively, in a bleeding cool article written by the witless Rich Johnston. He says in the article that back in 2018, Vox Day tried to start a comic book imprint called Comicsgate. Ethan Van Skyver objected, falsely claiming that because he used the phrase for his live streams, that he owned the right to the name. If Ethan meant the copyright for Comicsgate, he would need to show that he was the first to use the phrase in the production of some original work. He wasn't. The phrase was used by hundreds if not thousands of people before him, and there are numerous drawings, writings, and videos using that phrase, all of which have a greater standing to argue for ownership of the copyright. If he meant trademark, the same applies. Plenty of people used the phrase in the creation of artistic works, some of which were specifically labeled Comicsgate. He would need to show that Comicsgate was first a brand and that it was designed to distinguish its products from other products. He didn't and can't do that, so he has no claim. The phrase Comicsgate is at best a descriptor of a particular group of comic book fans. Simply using the term to get people's attention isn't enough to prove you own the term. Plenty of people using the phrase complained about this move and Ethan said he was trying to get the rights to protect them from Vox Day, a far-right commentator, if I'm being generous. Yeah, that still doesn't work. Whether it was Ethan's intention or not, the impression it left was that he wanted to control the phrase and decide who could and couldn't use it. According to Johnston, this is what another comic creator did. Antonio Malpica registered Comicsgate as a two-word trademark shortly after the Vox Day situation, with his lawyers claiming, quote, Comicsgate appearing in a mark means or signifies or is a term of art for the unity between consumers and creators that have been ostracized in the comic book industry due to their political beliefs and or from expressing their desires to read apolitical storytelling in comics for people of color, creed, nationality, gender, identity, and people from all walks of life. In the relevant trade or industry or as used in connection with the goods, services, collective membership organization listed in the application. In English, that means Comicsgate is a label used by some fans involved in the comic book industry. The last part is important. Industry. You need a trade or service or organization in order to apply for a trademark, and it can only be applied in cases that relate to that specific industry. This is very important because the possession of a trademark does not stop anyone from using the trademark word or phrase, and it doesn't stop someone from trademarking the same word for a different industry. This is how you can have multiple companies named Apple. None of them are in the same industry selling the same products, and they're also not selling fruit. That's also key. As stated on Secure Your Trademark, quote, The word Apple is an arbitrary word when used in connection with the manufacture and sale of computers and computer programs or tobacco products or educational materials. That is, there is nothing about these products that relates to apples. Accordingly, the term apple is actually a pretty strong trademark, as is the case when you apply a completely arbitrary term, however common it may be, to promote your products or services. The case would be much different if a person wanted to get a trademark on the word apple in connection with the sale of apples, the fruit. In that case, the name apple would simply be a generic term for the type of goods being provided, namely apples. Because of this, the United States Patent and Trademark Office would never issue a federal trademark registration for the term Apple if the only products being provided were fruit products. Even the best trademark attorney wouldn't be able to help you with that attempt. Antonio's provisionally granted trademark for Comicsgate was marked as abandoned in March of 2020 because he hadn't used it or filed for an extension. I don't know the reasons why that happened, however I question whether the full trademark would have been granted had he pursued it because of the unregistered trademark factor. An unregistered trademark is one being used by a person to promote a product or service but has never been registered. So for example, if someone uses Comicsgate to sell prints and comics but never registered the phrase, no one else could use the same phrase to sell similar products because they'd be trying to pass off as another business or banking on the success of that business. There is a limit to this in the law, which is that the unregistered trademarks are protected only within the person's geographical region. So if someone uses it in NYC, I couldn't use it there but I could use it in Chicago or online. If it originates online, it's not clear where the law falls. Even then, it wouldn't stop anyone from using the phrase. They simply couldn't use it to sell comics. 
Now, a smart person would realize this and let it be. The phrase Comicsgate is verboten in the comic book industry, and even among the people using it positively, there is division. There's really no smart reason to use the phrase to sell comics, and you'd be a fool to try to pursue a trademark to control it. In comes Preston Poulter. According to Johnston, he's a publisher and a critic of Comicsgate, so I can only assume that these two colluded to make this article in the hopes of owning Comicsgate, literally and figuratively. As Poulter says, quote, I registered Comicsgate, one word. As I publish comic books, it won't be hard to a book that uses a trademark, which no one else has done to date. But apparently it is hard to edit. Moving on. I will establish certain criteria over who can use the trademark that will forbid engaging in online harassment, the doxing of customers, or failure to fulfill in a timely fashion. Hey Preston, that's not how trademarks work. You don't get to control who uses the word. Allow me to demonstrate. Apple, Batman, Samsung, Spider-Man, Sony, Captain Marvel, Rockstar, McDonald's, Marvel Comics, AMC. I can say all of those trademarked words and there's nothing they can do about it. I can use those words to sell and promote products that have nothing to do with the products they sell. I can even use those words in relation to similar products, such as taking a picture of a half-eaten Portillo's hamburger and tweeting, this is the best burger ever, hashtag McDonald's sucks, and there's nothing they can do about it. So no, Preston, you can't trademark a word to stop people from being able to use it online. I know you think you're being super smart, and you're going to own Ethan Van Skyver, but this just makes you look stupid, and unprofessional, and petty. If what you want is to get into the good graces of the comic book industry, just bend over and remember not to clinch, and I'm sure they'll take you right in. But using the phrase Comicsgate isn't going to make that any smoother. They hate the term, and watching you try to own the word you also hate just looks stupid. Trademark the fucking word. It's not going to stop people from talking about comics. All you're doing is making an enemy of thousands of people. And that worked so well for the comic book industry, didn't it? This is your special move. This is your limit break. This is your bankai. You're going to trademark a phrase that barely anyone uses, and that'll stop all those nasty comic book fans from criticizing comics, and I'll sue anyone who doesn't use the word the way I say. You're going to stop alleged bullying by becoming a bully yourself. Well, have at it, genius. And while you're at the trademark office, you might want to add in simp, cuck, soy boy, mangina, feckless, cunt, ass hat, and maroon. That way you can sue for trademark infringement every time you get called one. Just a thought. But what do I know? I'm just some guy.